Hi everyone, welcome to this GCSE Foundation Revision video. The 77 days to go into your GCSE Maths exam, or 11 weeks, and today we're going to focus on the topic of bearings. So bearings, if you've got the revision card, card number 7 talks to you on how to find bearings, and it's quite a useful revision card to have, so if you've got those revision cards, card 7 is a quite useful one. But today's lesson we're going to be looking at how to measure bearings, how to draw things on a certain bearing, and how to answer some bearings questions. Now in terms of bearings, it's very important you've got your equipment that you need. So you're going to need, obviously, a pencil and a rubber. You're going to need a ruler. And also, you're going to need a protractor. In terms of protractors, whenever I used to do bearings in school, I used to use the 180-degree one, and that's fine. But also, if you've got a 360-degree protractor, they can be quite useful whenever the bearings are larger than 180 degrees. So it's just quite a useful thing that you might want to look into is a 360-degree protractor. Um, but yeah, so in this video, we're going to be looking at bearings. So let's get started. Hi, today we're going to be looking at bearings. So a bearing is a direction of travel and it's measured clockwise from north. So here's a typical question and we've been asked to write down the three figure bearing off Castle Town from Milton. So feel free to pause the video now and think how you'd find the three figure bearing off Castle Town from Milton. Okay, so if I was doing a question like this, the first thing I would do is I'd get my ruler and pencil and I would join up the two towns, Milton and Castle Town, like so. So I'd just join them up like so. Then I would find where I'm starting from. So in the question it says, find the bearing off Castle Town from Milton. So I'm starting from Milton, I'm going to draw a north line at Milton. Wherever you're starting from, draw a north line there. So it says from Milton, so that's where we're going to draw a north line. And we're just going to label it N for north. Now we want to measure the angle clockwise from north, and if we can find the angle clockwise from north, that will be our bearing. So let's get our protractor. Now I do like a 360 degree protractor. Um, I've only got a 180 degree one here on the computer, so I'm going to use this one. Uh, but if you do have a 360 degree one, they're really useful for whenever you've got bearings that are greater than 180 degrees. In this question, it won't actually make too much of a difference. So what I've done is I've got my protractor, and I've put the cross of the protractor on the town, Milton. And as you can see, the north line is going along the line with zero on it, like so. Now what we're going to do is we're going to measure the angle. So we're going to measure the angle from the north line around to the line we've drawn. So we're going to start at 0, which is here. And we're going to go 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 55, 56, 57. So that's a 57 degree angle. So let's move our protractor there and let's mark that in. That's a 57 degree angle, so 57 degrees. And that means that the bearing now has to have three figures. So because it's less than 100, we put a 0 in front of it. So it'll be 0, 5, 7 degrees. So that means the three figure bearing of Castle Town from Milton is 057 degrees. And that's it. So all we done was we joined up our two towns. We drew a north line at where we're starting from, so from Milton. And we measured the angle clockwise around to the line that joins the towns. And that was 57 degrees. And because there's three figures, we put a zero in front of it. So 057 degrees. And that's it. Okay, let's have a look at our next question. So this time we've got Antrim and Belfast, and we've been asked to write down the three-figure bearing of Belfast from Antrim. So again, feel free to pause the video. Actually, you could sketch this out if you wanted to on a piece of paper. You could do Antrim and Belfast, just, you know, roughly on your page, and, you know, you could actually do this question yourself. So feel free to pause the video now and either try that or just think how you'd find the bearing of Belfast from Antrim. Okay, so my first step would be to join up the two towns. So I get a ruler and pencil, and I join up Antrim and Belfast, like so. And then I would find where I'm starting from. The question says the three-figure bearing off Belfast from Antrim. So we're starting from Antrim. So we're drawing a north line at Antrim, like so. And as you can see, north's going upwards, so I've drawn my north line, like so. Then what we're going to do is we're going to get our protractor and we're going to turn it so that the zero is on the north line. And remember, we're always measuring clockwise from north, so we're going to start at the north line and we're always going to go around clockwise. If it's bigger than 180 degrees, we're going to have to carry on, and that's why the 360 degree protractor is pretty useful. So that's we're going to. So we've got our protractor lined up. We've got the cross of the protractor on Antrim. We've got the north line along the line with zero on it, and we're going to measure the size of this angle, the angle from the north line around to the line joining the two towns clockwise. So we're going to start at zero and we're going to go around. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, all the way around. We've got to 90, 100, 101, 102. So that's a 102 degree angle. So the question says to write down, let's get rid of the protractor. The question says to write down the three figure bearing of Belfast from Antrim. The answer would be 102 degrees. And that's got three figures already, so we don't need to put the zero in front of it. And that's it. Okay, let's have a look at another one. Okay, this time we've got Port Rush and Larne, and the question says to write down the three figure bearing of Port Rush from Larne. So again, feel free to pause the video and to think how you're going to find the three figure bearing of Port Rush from Larne. Okay, so the first thing I would do is I get my ruler and pencil and I would join up Port Rush and Larne, like so. 
Then I would think where I'm starting from. The question says, write down the free figure bearing off Port Rush from Larne. So that means we're going to draw a north line at Larne, so it's going to go up like so. And we're going to label that with an N for north. Now we want to measure the angle clockwise from north around to the line that joins them. So we want to go clockwise from north around to the line that joins them. So we want to find the size of that angle. And the size of that angle will be the bearing, because remember the bearing is always measured clockwise from north. So we want to find the size of that angle. Now this question would be really handy if we had the 360 degree protractor. So if you just put that on Larn with the north line on the zero and you go around all the way clockwise around, you could just read off what the size of that reflex angle is. Alternatively, what you could do is you could draw a line going straight down the bottom and say, well, that's 180 degrees. And then you could just measure this part here and then do 180 degrees plus that part. And that'd be the size of the angle clockwise from north. So you can measure that. Alternatively, and what I'm actually going to do here is I'm actually, because I've only got this 180 degree protractor, I'm actually going to measure the size of this angle in here. So I'm going to get my my protractor and I'm going to put it on the north line again and I'm putting it the other way around this time and I'm going to measure the size of this angle in here the size of that angle so I'm going to start with zero which is on the inside and I'm going to go around and as you can see it's just there 60 it's one degree short that is 59 degrees the size of that angle is 59 degrees now that's not actually if I get rid of our protractor now so we didn't actually want the size of that angle we wanted the size of this angle the one clockwise from north going all the way around now if this one's 59 degrees remember the angles at a point will add together to be 360 degrees so if we do 360 subtract 59 that's equal to 301 degrees so that means that this angle is 301 degrees so the angle measured clockwise from north around to the line that joins them is 301 degrees so the bearing would be 301 degrees and that's it now that question has said you could have drawn a line straight down and that would have been 180 degrees and measured that part and then added the 180 degrees and that part and that would have been 301 degrees also or if you had the 360 degree protractor it's really simple you can just put the zero on the north line and go around to 301 and then that's your angle Okay, let's have a look at our next question. So this time we've got a school. So there's a school and there's a shop. And we're told that a park is on a bearing of 0, 070 degrees from the school. The park's on a bearing of 320 degrees from the shop. And we've been asked to show the park on the map. So what we're going to do is, let's start off with this first bit of information we're told. We're told the park is on a bearing of 0, 070 degrees from the school. So let's draw a north line at the school. So let's get our ruler and pencil and draw a north line at the school. So that's our north line. And we're going to get our protractor. And we're going to put the zero on the north line like so. And because we know that the park is on a bearing of 0, 070 degrees, what we're going to do is we're going to go to zero and we're going to go around to 70 degrees. So 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70. And we're going to put a little dot there at 70 degrees. Okay, so our first sentence said the park is on a bearing of 0, 070 degrees from the school. So if we draw a line from the school through that point and carry on, that is on a bearing of 0, 070 degrees. It's a 70 degree angle from north. So let's do that. Let's get a ruler and pencil. Let's go to the school and let's draw a line going through that point and carry on. So that means the park is somewhere on that line. Now what we're also told is the park is on a bearing of 320 degrees from the shop. So there's a north line at the shop and we want to find a bearing of 320 degrees. So remember they're measured clockwise from north so we're going to start at the north line and we're going to go around to 320 degrees. And again if you've got that 360 degree protractor there class you can just put the zero on the north line and go around to 320 degrees, put a dot and then draw the line. Uh, we don't have a 360 degree protractor so what we could do is we could get our protractor and we could put it on the shop like so. We could say, well, if we go straight down, it would go down like so. So that's 180 degrees. Now we can actually turn our protractor around the other way. So that part on this side is now 180 degrees. We want to go for 320. So that was going to be another 140 to go because 180 plus another 140 is 320. So if we go to zero now at the bottom here and go around to 140, that's there. So if we just move our protractor a second, if we now get a ruler and a pencil and we go to the shop and we draw a line through that point and carry on, that means that this angle here was 140 and that means the whole angle going around clockwise from north would be 320 degrees and that means that obviously the park is along that line somewhere and because it's on this line and this line that means this is the park here there and that's it and just to say also because this was 320 degrees going around 320 you could have gone 40 degrees around the other way so you could have got your protractor and just put it on the north line this way and gone around to 40 degrees and put the dot and then it would also be the line in the same place and obviously where the two lines meet this line and this line will be where the park is and that's it 
Okay, let's have a look at the next type of question. This is called a back bearings question, and I'm going to go through one of them for you, and then I've got two for you to try yourself. So here we've got the bearing of Nottingham from Dublin is 098 degrees. What's the bearing of Nottingham from Dublin? So the bearing the other way around. So whenever I'm doing a question like this, I find that a sketch can be useful. Actually, actually, I can do this question straight away, just knowing a bit of a shortcut. And I'll talk about the shortcut as well. But let's do a little sketch to begin with. So the bearing of Nottingham from Dublin, so from Dublin, let's say this is Dublin is 098 degrees so let's do a north line at dublin and let's say north is up so here we've got dublin and if we go up that's going to be our north line and uh, so that's dublin and we've got our north line and the bearing of nottingham from dublin is 098 degrees now this is a sketch i'm not going to draw this accurately you could i suppose do it accurately if you wanted to um, and if you get time it's a good way to check your answer and um, so here we've got dublin on our north line and the bearing is 098 degrees remember they're measured clockwise from north so if we go to the north line we go around clockwise we go around to 90 degrees which is east and a little bit further so it'll be over here somewhere and we'll go to Dublin and we'll draw a line just through there somewhere so that's an angle just around about 98 degrees it's just a bit more than 90 degrees and then let's do our north line at Nottingham and I've just drawn a north line at Nottingham so we've got Dublin we've got Nottingham and we're told this is an angle of 98 degrees and we were asked in this question to find the bearing of Dublin from Nottingham. So we want to find the bearing of Dublin from Nottingham. So remember that would be measured clockwise from north. So we want to find the size of this angle. And if we can find the size of that angle, that's going to be our bearing. Okay, now there's a couple of ways we can do this question. One way I'm going to do this question to begin with is to consider co-interior angles. Remember back to our angles and parallel lines, you had your two parallel lines. So if you had two parallel lines, I'm just going to do a little sketch. So if you had a parallel line and a parallel line and a line that crosses them like so, we find that this angle and this angle, the co-interior angles, they always add to 180 degrees. Now, if you turn your head sideways, this could be a north line. This could be a north line if you turn your head sideways. So as you can see here, we've got a parallel line and a parallel line. That means that this angle and this angle will add together to be 180 degrees. So if we do 180 degrees, subtract 98 degrees, that's equal to 82 degrees. So that means this angle in here would be 82 degrees. So that's fantastic. Now we know the size of this angle, we can find the size of the angle we want, which is our bearing, which is this big reflex angle. So remember the angles at a point add up to 360. So if we do 360, subtract 82, that's going to be equal to 278 degrees. So that's our answer. So whenever you're doing back bearings questions, a little sketches and north lines and considering your co-interior angles can be really, really useful. Now, there is a bit of a shortcut in this question. There's a way that I would sometimes use just to check the answer. And that is that you can just add 180 degrees or subtract 180 degrees. And let's explain that. So for instance, here, we had the bearing was 098 degrees. If we just do 098 degrees, so 098 degrees or 98 degrees, and we add 180, that gives us 278 degrees. And let's consider why. If I'm traveling this way, down here, and I want to turn back on myself, I would have to rotate for another 180 degrees. So I just add on another 180, and that would give me 278 degrees. So if you've got a bearing which is less than 180 degrees, you can just add on 180 degrees, and you can find the back bearing. And if you've got a bearing originally that's bigger than 180 degrees, if you subtract 180 degrees, you can find the back bearing. And that's a bit of a shortcut. So this is one for you to try now yourself. We're told the bearing of town A from town B is 135 degrees. What's the bearing of town B from town A? So feel free to pause the video now and to work out this question. Okay, so if I was to do this question, we're told the bearing of town A from town B. So town B, and we do a north line, and we're told the bearing is 135 degrees. So if we start at the north line and we go through 135 degrees, we'll be down this way somewhere because that's 135 degrees roughly, and we can draw a little line like so. So that means that town A must be down here somewhere. So then we've got town B there, and we've got town A down there somewhere, and that is 135 degrees. And let's draw a north line at town A. So so the north line and we want to find the bearing of time b from time a so we want to measure the angle clockwise from north going around from the north line around to the line joining a and b so we want to find the size of that angle so let's consider our core interior angles we've got two parallel lines the north line and the north line obviously so if this is 135 degrees this angle and this angle will add together to be 180 considering core interior angles so 180 subtract 135 is equal to 45 degrees so it means that this angle in here is 45 degrees now the angles at a point add up to 360 degrees, so if we do 360, subtract 45, that's equal to 315 degrees. So that means the bearing of B from A, of time B from time A, is 315 degrees. And that's it. And hopefully you got that right.
and we can check it we can take this angle we can just add 180 degrees because it's less than 180 degrees we can add 180 degrees and that gives us 315 degrees and that's it okay let's have a look at our last question so the last question says the bearing of c from d is 288 degrees what's the bearing of d from c so feel free to pause the video and to try this question out yourself Okay, so the bearing of C from D, so we're at D, so here's D, is 288 degrees. So if we've got a north line at D, so I've drawn a north line at D, and we're told the bearing of C from D is 288 degrees. So let's go around clockwise from north to 288 degrees. So there's 270, so it's a bit higher than west, so I'm going to go up that way. So that means that C's in this direction somewhere. So let's say that that's C there. And we were asked, what's the bearing of D from C? So we want to find the bearing of D from C, so we want to measure the angle clockwise from north so that'll be that way so we want to find the size of that angle now we were told the bearing of c from d is 288 degrees so clockwise from north going around to the line that joins them is 288 degrees so we now want to find the size of this angle here because if we can find the size of this one then we can use co-interior angles to find the size of that one so 360 take away 288 will be equal to 72 degrees now we know the size of this one, we've got co-interior angles, we've got those two parallel lines. So we can do 180, take away 72 degrees, because remember co-interior angles add up to 180 degrees. That would be equal to 108 degrees. And that's great because it's got three figures, so we don't need to put a zero in front of it. Remember to watch out, if it is less than 100, you have to put a zero in front of it. So the bearing of D from C would be 108 degrees. And that's it. And remember, we can check it. The bearing we started with was bigger than 180. So if we take away 180, that gives us 108. That's it. And that's it. So in this video, we've looked at bearings. We've looked at the fact that bearings are a direction of travel measured clockwise from north. The fact that they have to have three digits. So if it's less than 100 degrees, so for instance, if it was 84 degrees, you write 084 degrees. And we've also looked at how to measure bearings. We've looked at how to mark things off on a certain bearing. And hopefully you've tried some questions yourself. Now, particularly with bearings, it'd be quite useful to do some practice. And the practice questions are linked to those in the description below because it'd be quite useful if you could print them to then be able to do them on the sheet like you will be doing in the GCSE exam. So I really hope you find this video useful on bearings. And um, obviously tomorrow is going to be 76 days to go to your GCSE math exam. So tomorrow's video, remember, 3 o'clock tomorrow on YouTube. And I really hope you find these videos useful. Thank you. Cheers. Bye.